Hello lovely butterflies, it's Fonce. Welcome to this Journal on Monday, week 150. Working in my beloved Journal on Monday art journal, I am starting with some gesso and my rock formation stencil, the large version of it. And I'm just applying the gesso using a sponge. Now I had to thin down the gesso just a little bit because it was a bit too thick to work with it this way. I left it to dry and then I came back with sand paste, just applying it with my palette knife here and there to add a little bit of extra texture before I go in with the color. Once dry, I could come back with some color. Now, I knew that I wanted to use quite some water, so I needed to protect the binding of my journal to prevent the water and the color to run all over my journal. I'm using Colorex colors, just applying some drops here and there, blending it with water. And then to make it run everywhere, I just close the pages. Now, these are very, very soft colors that I'm using and I'm using quite some water, so it's very toned down. Next up, I'm adding some more accents to my color, this time using the Fluid Acrylics from Deco Art. And the raw sienna, as per usual, needs a bit of mixing, as it always uh, dries up inside the bottle because of the pigment, because of the characteristics of the pigment. And I'm just applying the color using my palette knife. To make sure that my Colorex isn't going anywhere, as it is um, water reactive watercolor, I'm protecting it using some matte varnish. Over that, I'm applying a layer of weathered wood crackle medium, and that's why I needed the Colorex to stay in place. I left the red wood to dry by itself and now I'm applying a layer of chalky finish paint using a sponge and I'm not overworking it. Once the paint is on the paper, I'm not going back over it because that's how you get the most beautiful cracks in the paint. Once dry, I am lifting some of the paint using a tape because I have a lot of texture going on and I wanted to see if I could still lift it this way. Now, in some areas it did work 
very nicely as you can see and then in some others well not that much if I hadn't let the paint dry as much as I did I might have had more success with this I still want to lift way more paint than I have done here, so I'm just going in with a baby wipe. And that is something that the chalky finish cannot resist, as long as it hasn't been drying for hours or days at an end. And then again, I'm protecting everything with another layer of ultra matte varnish. Using some grey memento ink, because I don't want it to stand out too much, I'm combining several of my stamp set, the Rock and Rust one and the London New York stamp set using several stamps from each set and I'm just adding a little bit of stamping and I'm explaining here to my patrons why I'm stamping on the left and on the right but that's on the extended video. I decided to add some cambric but before doing so I want to add some stamping that will just peek out from the uh, the cambric once it's on the paper and this is from the perfect word stamp set so now i can resize my cambric which has been colorized uh, probably with quin gold uh, considering the rusty look of it and i'm just layering several strips and then also a strip of paper to make it stand out from the background Quickly sewing all my strips together, the layered cambric and the paper. And then pulling the threads to the front so that I can tie a little knot and this way I'm sure that the thread is not going anywhere. This is the first test print of my stickers. As you can see, the cutting did not go exactly how it was supposed to go. That's where, what the tests are for. But what I actually wanted to test here was the mixed media compat compatibility of my stickers. So first I need to decide where I want to put it. And I decided to cut it up and put it on the bottom of the page. To make the stickers work with the rest of the background, I'm giving them that same greyish edge before sticking them down. And 
meanwhile, this was one of the first time I used them uh, on a spread. Meanwhile, I know that these stickers can take just about anything from paint to uh, crayons to um, pastels, whatever it is you feel like using. These are really mixed media compatible. And as you can see, you can even lift them off the page and then stick them back down again. I always like to have an edge around my spread because it helps the eye to stay on the paper. So I'm going around it with some black fluid acrylic and to keep it very light, I'm just tapping it on using my palette knife. Now for the next segment of this video, I jumped a part of it because that is my way to thank my patrons. So by the way, Butterfly patrons, thank you so, so much for being one of my patrons. Um, they are entitled to extended versions of the videos with no fast forwards where I explain much, much more because that is one of the perks of being um, one of my patrons. So I'm going back to the stickers and giving them some extra color just using some water soluble pencils and then going, going over it with water. So this was one of my tests as well to see if they would warp, if the text would move and nothing happened because that is how I wanted them. I wanted them to be mixed media friendly. So I was talking about my patrons. If you would like to join me for live hangouts, for live journal with me sessions, for extended videos, check out the link to my Patreon page, which will be in the description of this video. I'm adding some more stamping as well to the word stickers, just to make them work with the background. And again, I'm using one of my Rock and Rust stamps. So I'm explaining why I'm going to add what it is I'm going to add. And in this case, I'm taking my circle stencil. Going back in with the Unipin pen that I love so much lately. And I was a bit worried because I do have a lot of texture going on, but it worked perfectly. I started by adding my date stamp but I did want to add a little bit more stamping, as you will see in a second, um, just to make the date stamp work with the background as well. That's it for today. I hope you liked today's video. If so, don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Um, click on the little bell so that you get notifications because I do have community posts going up on my YouTube channel and you don't want to miss those. See you next time. Ta-da!